Mr. Speaker, tēnei e tua ke ki te tukuaku mihi uh, ki era uh, kaiwaro i tanu mea uh, kei te taitonga, ki a rātou nei whānau, uh, ka nui te mamai, kei wainganui a rātou, kei wainganui a mātou hoki, uh, ki a tuku te aroha, uh, te ngā roimata uh, mō ngā tua huatanga ki reira paimarire ki, ki a rātou. Mr. Mr. Speaker, in acknowledgement, um, of uh, previous comments that have been made, I too want to join uh, my deepest sympathies with the families of the 29 miners coming from Huntley, uh, which is a mining community, and having uncles that still work in the mines, having gone into the mines myself, I can understand uh, just a small part of the, the despair that families are going through at the moment, uh, and my deepest sympathies to them. It is my pleasure to be able to uh, join with previous comments of the Labour opposition and add my support uh, to the intent of this bill. Uh, it's, it was quite interesting listening to the very short submission of the previous speaker. She was quick to point out that Labour had been gov in government for nine long years and what did we do? Mr Speaker, Labour definitely believes that lifting productivity stimulates growth. Three pillars to lifting uh, productivity and stimulating growth was achieved actually by Labour in those nine years. Those three pillars are skills, lifting the skills of our people. We had a skills strategy. Yeah. National got rid of that. We invested in adult and community education because we recognise that there are many rungs of the ladder to ensure that people can go into further education, training and employment. National got rid of that. We wanted to ensure that there was a pathway for our kids from school into educa education, training and employment. We had targeted strategies to ensure that there was a pathway at every level for our kids leave leaving skills at school and investing in that. National is making it harder for people to choose to take up education. And what's worse, where investment is needed most in early childhood education, and we know if we give our kids a great start at the front end, productivity is guaranteed. National got rid of that funding, and shame on them. The, third pillar, the, second, pillar, the second pillar was investing and getting the priorities for investment uh, right. And it's really not clear what National is doing to ensure that there is a plan for growth. What is the plan, National, for growth? You're quick to talk about it, but no one understands what the plan is for growth. But we had a plan. The third pillar that we had was investing in R&D. The tax credits, the fast forward fund that was worked out by a Labour government with the sector to ensure that we were investing in our ideas and in innovation through uh, the, the tax credit was something that we were very proud of, the Fast Forward Fund, but National got rid of that. So in nine years we were working towards a systematic plan to ensure that at all parts of, of the productivity landscape, if you like, we were, we were trying to address that. And it wasn't a short-term fix, because we knew that you needed long-term investment for, for, for real gains and outcomes. But what National's doing is they're appealing to short-term sentiments out there by taking from one and giving to the other, getting the priorities completely muddled up. Mr Speaker, back to the bill. Having sat uh, on the select committee, it was interesting listening to uh, comments by submitters. And some of those comments related to the uh, independence of the Commission. Clause 12, as you know, relates to the terms of reference for the Commission and the issues that were raised with the Select Committee were that the Commission should be able to take, undertake work uh, on its own initiative. As I understood it, the basis for this assertion was to ensure that the independence of the Commission helped to establish a high level of credibility in its deliberations and that, 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 uh, in, that um, level of independence would actually help to achieve that. The bill in clause 12.1 stated that in carrying out its functions under section 91A, the Commission must act in accordance with the terms of reference set by the referring ministers for each inquiry, review and regulatory impact analysis. And some might have argued that this provision limits the ability 
of the Commission to initiate its own work program, we received advice from the Australian Commissioner that there was a level of negotiation between the Commission and the Minister to, to negotiate terms of reference, which was more of a practice rather than a legislative imperative. And I can say that members of the committee were quite uh, warm and open to this ability of uh, a, a free flow opportunity to, uh, to, to form uh, particular aspects for review. And that is why the committee recommended amending clause 12 and inserting a new sub clause to make clear that the referring minister is to, is to consult the commission about the terms of reference to that uh, there is a relative balance between independence of the commission and government policy. Probably from my perspective and certainly in listening to the submission of the Australian commissioner, it doesn't go far enough, but it, but it could in time. Uh, the comment was made previously that uh, we were surprised by the low level of interest uh, in submitters and, and submissions being made to the Select Committee on this bill. Uh, we uh, had expected that there would be more. However, of all the submissions that we did hear, the presentation from the Australian Productivity Commissioner was very informative and helpful in the final deliberations uh, that led to the suggestions of the Select Committee. In fact, we, we were particularly interested in the process uh, undertaken to identify um, the, the issues that would be considered for a review, very wide-ranging in, in their uh, content, the process for determining a terms of reference, as I referred to previously, negotiation between the Minister uh, and the Commission, uh, significantly the Treasurer and the relevant uh, Ministers. <coughs> The way in which uh, public consultation occurred as well. Uh, it, it, it appeared from the, the, the remarks that we heard that there was a full le uh, level of public consultation through uh, releasing a discussion document, releasing a draft report, which we actually felt uh, was, was a bonus uh, to the process and role of the uh, Commission, because once a draft report was released, that would go out for public cons consultation. Uh, potentially recommendations could be uh, outlined in that draft report and then a public debate had. So the, the Minister had time to listen to the public debate about recommendations coming from the Commission and, and could be well appraised of all the various issues that he or she might need to consider in formulating a response. Uh, I'm pleased that, the, uh, that part of that intent was picked up. Uh, in terms of uh, amending Clause 13. Uh, and, and again, sure, it could go far enough, but that is something that we may have to look at and, and uh, reflect in hindsight about improvements in this area. But I can say it was a welcomed response from the Australian Commissioner to, to say that um, it generated positive d debate and informed debate and enabled ministers to make informed responses which can only be a good thing if you're trying to look at a sector-wide approach uh, to improve productivity. Uh, Mr Speaker, I too, uh, like members of la the Labor team, uh, would have hoped for a stronger and greater alignment uh, with, uh, with the Australian Productivity Commission. However, in saying that, uh, the bill will uh, form uh, the New Zealand Productivity Commission. We can only hope at an operational level there will be constant and free-flowing dialogue and sharing of skills, uh, experience, advice uh, between our two commissions. There will be much to gain from that front. While Labor does support this bill, we are concerned that the potential for the Commission to be narrow in its focus and captured by government policy could happen. Could happen. But if that's not the intention of the government, then one, we could only expect uh, that the types of questions coming up for review could be things like, how does a tax switch, which shifts real gains to the top 3% of income earners lift productivity? Or how does the fire at will bill that will undoubtedly hurt those more vulnerable in the workforce lift productivity? If the true intention of this bill is to ensure that a relative balance of independence uh, is, is assured through this process, then I'm happy to continue to lend my support to this bill, but I certainly look forward to the improvements. Kia ora koutou.